to the punchline. I'm your comic strip critic, and we got a good show lined up for you today, folks. We're taking a look at a comic that just made its debut, and we also have an exclusive interview lined up with the cartoonist who's making that comic. So let's have some fun. Newsflash for you, everybody. We live in a world that is dominated by geek culture. And if you don't believe me and want some proof, well, I am more than happy to oblige. The Lord of the Rings, The Avengers, Game of Thrones, and Harry Potter are all massive runaway hits. Pacific Rim, a movie about Gundams fighting Godzillas, was heavily advertised on ESPN. Man caves now regularly include old-school arcade cabinets. Being obsessively into the latest technological gizmo is basically Apple's entire strategy. Major movie studios no longer show previews at the Cannes Film Festival, they show them at San Diego Comic Con. And as someone with no vested interest in either of these activities, when I describe a hobby in which participants build up a team roster using carefully determined and obsessively tried statistics, adjusting these teammates on the fly for special situations, competing against people from potentially across the globe, I could very easily be talking about either fantasy football or Pokemon. My point is, with geek culture so massively on the rise, it would only make sense for a medium as old school as newspaper comics to eventually create something that would embrace it. After all, being obsessively into comic books is one of the old school traditional signs of geekdom. And that brings us to today's comic, Intelligent Life. Intelligent Life may be a new comic, but its creator David Reddick is no newbie in the world of cartooning. He's been a part of Jim Davis's crew on Garfield for years. He's been an editorial cartoonist and newsroom artist. He was the force behind a Star Trek comic that ran in the official Star Trek magazine for three years and created the webcomic Legend of Bill, which had over 2 million views a month at the height of its popularity. So this is not some naive, wet-behind-the-ears rookie we're talking about here. Intelligent Life is very much a modern comic. It's new having only debuted on July 7th. This year, 2014. Yeah. And it's not just a comic that's new in terms of a debut date, it's a comic that feels new. It places a lot of emphasis on a lot of modern day things like social media, fantasy sports, the blogosphere, and current pop culture. A lot of current pop culture. Now, I was given a special preview packet of Intelligent Life by King Features Syndicate, but since they'd rather not have the comics released to the public before their official release date, I can't show them here, but there are several that I still can show you. I want to give a very special thanks to the folks at King Features and the Comics Kingdom for arranging my preview of the comics, and for also hooking all of you loyal viewers up with a special offer. If you create a premium account on the Comics Kingdom website and enter the code CSCRITIC as the person who referred you, you'll get a full month of the premium membership. Trust me, being able to put together your own personal comics page that gets emailed to you every day is great, so give it a shot. Now, since I can't show you all the comics that are in the preview packet, we'll just take a look at the ones that are available to the public and make our best intelligent guess about what the comic is going to be like in the future. So this is Intelligent Life. Really? Really? Whoa! Gwen from work, right? How cool is it that I'd run into you out here in public? Well, we are outside of work, walking to our cars like everyone else. Crazy, right? Meet Skip and Gwen. I have the feeling that Skip's going to be the main character of the comic. He's a pop culture enthusiast who works at a marketing firm whose best friend Mike is the kind of nerd that even the regular nerds would beat up for lunch money, and Gwen is an active blogger and social media nut. I have this sneaking suspicion that she'd be right at home on Tumblr. Apparently Skip has a crush on Gwen, a plot point which I hope eventually evolves into something more, a la Cooper and Val from Retail. Lots of good storyline potential there. Imagine the two of them on a date at a convention. Oh, and the artwork is wonderfully stylistic. I admit to having not watched the show much, but I'm reminded a fair bit of the character designs from Total Drama Island. Very clean, sharp lines with overblown character traits and features. This style seems like it jumped straight off the screen from Cartoon Network. 
This is clear, bold artwork meant for the size of the 21st century's newspaper comic. But I think that the most potentially interesting relationship is actually going to be between two of the guys in the comic strip. Oh my. No. So, Skip, what's it gonna take to get you in on my fantasy football league? You let me have Klingons and Sith Lords on my team, and I'm in. How about a couple of free draft picks of actual NFL players? Okay, do you remember earlier when I said how geeky fantasy football can be? Uh, I I'm not kidding. Earlier today, I saw four different magazines all talking about putting together the best fantasy football team. Barry is that kind of geek. Not that he'd ever actually call himself a geek, he's a little too nervous to come out of the closet in that regard still. Oh my. No, Takei, no. He's a total sports and fitness buff who can talk about the stats of leading draft picks the way Skip can rattle off the tech specs of the Starship Enterprise. At first glance, these seem like two characters who have nothing in common and wouldn't get along. And yet, that's what they keep trying to do. I mean, Barry actually went out of his way to invite Skip to his fantasy football league. In another comic, he invites Skip over to watch the big game with his friends. The jock is actively inviting the geek into his social circle. He's being the bigger man in this case, and that's not something that you usually see in most depictions of the jock and geek. And sure, he and Skip are both being overblown stereotypes of the jock and geek, but the comic's barely a week old. I'm willing to give it time. I'd love to see an extended storyline between the two somehow connecting over something together. Actually, I just like to see storylines, period. The preview packet I received didn't include any, but I'll just give David Reddick the benefit of the doubt and presume that they'll be coming down the road eventually. So I guess you can consider this episode more of a preview than a review, but I will say that Intelligent Life definitely looks like it's going to be something that you should check out. It could really become big in the geek community, especially online. Pillars of geek community, people like Will Wheaton and Felicia Day, I think this is something that they would really, really like. I would like to see some storylines and some deeper, more nuanced characters eventually grow into the strip, but for the first month or so that I've seen, this is a very, very promising start. I'm looking forward to the future. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you will please join me in welcoming my next guest. He is the creator of Intelligent Life, which just made its debut launch on ComicsKingdom.com and in newspapers. Mr. David Reddick. David, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Intelligent Life looks like it's off to a strong start so far. I'm looking forward to the future. Yes, me too. It's a very good start. A lot of buzz surrounding it. Uh, lots of outlets uh, covering its its launch and whatnot, and very good reaction online. So very, very exciting. Good. Uh, now, one of the things that I was wondering is, this is such a unique strip. What led to the creation of Intelligent Life? What was the brainstorm that got you to where we are now? Well, Intelligent Life is a culmination of everything that is me, everything that I love, uh, everything that is geeky and uh, dorky and sort of stands on the periphery of well, what used to be the mainstream. The beauty of all the things that I love uh, is that it is now those things are the mainstream. Uh, the geek culture has infiltrated the pop culture in general and is now really uh, the mainstream, no longer on the periphery of things. So Intelligent Life is a culmination of what I love, but also uh, various work that I have produced in the past, having worked for Star StarTrek.com, uh, doing a comic strip for them for three years. Star Trek magazine, a lot of Star Trek, work at, having worked for Paramount Pictures and CBS Studios in uh, an official capacity there. Working for the Roddenberry Company, really, really great people, producing two web comics and various artwork uh, for Roddenberry.com and Roddenberry Entertainment. Uh, working for Garfield for the last 10 years. And any other plethora of varied... Um, geek-related type things. I've even worked in the gaming industry. I have a game called Red Shirts. I'm the artist. Jonathan Schwartz is uh, the writer of that game, yeah. and uh, it's led to some very fun, very geeky things. So I'm intimately familiar with that world, and it has, uh, it is, Intelligent Life is a culmination of all of those things. Okay. Now, about the comic itself and the creation process, do you create the comic uh, using the old-fashioned pen and paper, or are you more of a, a digital tablet sort of guy when it comes to working on Intelligent Life? 
A uh, little bit of both. I will say the final product, the final strips are done on my Wacom Cintiq, uh, Cintiq 21 UX. Large screen. Uh, I love the Wacom products very much, and this Cintiq has served me very well. I've had it since the days of the Trek life for Star Trek.com. So uh, all the final strips are done digitally in Photoshop uh, on uh, because I, I don't... I don't like to auto-tune my, my line and vector art myself, so I like Photoshop. It, in terms of digital drawing, it gives me a true line, and it gives me exactly what I want. Plus, I've used it for just so long. Uh, it's, like, it's like using ink on paper. However, I also uh, I, I covet my paper and pencil and pen, and I carry a sketchbook religiously. A lot of the strips, uh, the characters and poses, I'll sketch in pencil just to change the medium and have fun, and then uh, scan them in, ink them in Photoshop. So... A little bit of both, but the final product is done digitally. Okay. We've seen some of your uh, passions in, uh, in the intelligent life already, I'm guessing. Uh, I've seen a TARDIS from Doctor Who. Uh, one of the characters was wearing uh, Matt Smith's uh, fez and bow tie in one of the yes. comics, I believe. Bow ties are cool. I think I actually see some stuff behind you right now. I think I see a tick cover back there. You do. Some of your other... Right there. That's, yeah. that's an action figure, actually. That yeah. is tourist tick. Uh a rare find for me, and so, it's hanging so right on my wall. What are some of your other big uh, geek passions and hobbies? Uh, easily, uh, action figures, comic books, a lot of the standard geek stuff that I've just always loved since I was a kid. Uh, I'm a huge comics geek. When I say comics, especially comic strips, I grew up in an antique shop, and uh, I was exposed to quite a few old uh, Sunday comics pages. There was a stack of comics, Sunday comics, from 1912 up through the 20s that I sat and just poured through when I was about 10 or 11 years old. Um, I got to hold in my grubby little hands original Roy Crane strips and original Alley Oop strips and Polly and Her Pals and all sorts of uh, really very cool stuff, Little Abner strips. And I've debated to this day if those were Frank Frazetta ghost strips, and I should have just taken one and put it in my pocket. But, you know, uh, I'm a geek for anything cartooning, any comic stuff, anything art. Uh, if I go into an office supply store like Staples, I will never walk out because I'm a nerd for every single thing that's in there. I like new pencils, new pens, and new Post-it notes. It doesn't really matter. I just love office supplies. So, um, you know, all the geeky stuff, uh, gaming-type things and um, uh, graphic novels, you name it. Just I'm a geek for anything nerdy and geeky, basically, and that's just how I've always been. All right. Uh, that's fine. Everyone's passionate about something. Um, yes. You've been a part of, you mentioned you mentioned it a little while ago, of, of a, such a wide variety of comics, ranging from your time over at Garfield to being an editorial cartoonist. I saw in some of your work that happened uh, right after 9-11. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. six years life. for a daily newspaper, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, you part of the Trek Life, like, like you said, which was both in print and online, if I'm understanding yes. correctly. Mm -hmm. And then now you're doing Intelligent Life, which is a newspaper comic which also runs online just as regularly. Going yeah. from all these different mediums and all these different things, what's it like switching mindsets between your job at Paws Inc. or being an editorial cartoonist to working on Intelligent Life now? That's a very good question. Uh, it's sort of akin, I think, to being an actor to some degree, um, taking on varied roles. Uh, my cartooning style remains the same. I draw the way I draw. Uh, year by year, ideally streamlining and uh, improving. And, uh, and whatnot. However, working in the various comics that I've worked in, uh, in the various mediums and genres that I've worked in, has afforded me a chance to really broaden, uh, broaden my skills, but broaden my interests and uh, knowledge of, of various you know, things, both cartooning and subject matter. Uh, again, it's sort of like taking on varied roles as an actor. You, you take on this role and you're on this show for so long and you are this character and you are inside that, the head of that character and then that show may come to an end and you audition for a new role and you are now in the role of that character or characters and uh, you give it your all and uh, you learn along the way. And it feeds all the things that will come thereafter, of course. So Intelligent Life is a culmination of all of those interests, all of those things that I've done artistically, writing-wise, interest-wise, talking to people uh, about those things. So uh, where I'm at right now is a very fun culmination of all of those past experiences. Okay. Um, one of the things that I've been sort of curious about is you mentioned earlier before we started recording that Intelligent Life also already has a very devoted, passionate following online. 
Yes. But it's also launching as a print uh, comic, too. So yes. what's it like debuting a comic in both specters? How do, how do those two different avenues of approach that dealt with? Uh, well, they are very different, and uh, and they can be the same as well. Um, in the online realm, uh, the online realm is something I'm, I'm very, very intimately familiar with. Um, working for Garfield, for the Pause Studio, uh, I am the uh, digital and social media coordinator out there, so I take care of all Garfield social media, uh, digital apps and whatnot, so pretty much if it's digital, uh, I'm uh, the creative uh, manager uh, re in regards to it. So I know social media and the online realm very well, ki combined with the fact that I've I've had a webcomic called Legend of Bill for the last five plus years. Intimately familiar with the world of webcomics. Of course, uh, the Trek Life for Star Trek.com was a, a webcomic for three years. It also ran on IDW Publishing's comic books and, you know, Tokyo Pop, Star Trek Magazine. So those were the print side of things. And, uh, of course, working for Roddenberry.com, created two webcomics, Gene's Journal and Roddenberry, for uh, Rod Roddenberry's company. Uh, Rod being the son of Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek. Very good people out there. And so I have had my hands dipped in the digital realm and web comics and social media for a very long time. So online affords me the ability to directly uh, interact with readers and with those interested in the work and uh, have direct impact on what I throw into social media from sketches to interests to, hey, had a great day, hey, had a bad day, here's what the comic's about. Uh, where newspapers, that uh, that's where King Features Syndicate comes in. They... Are they are masters of what they do, and they take care of bringing the interest to editors okay. and uh, talking to editors directly. And my involvement regarding print is it affords me the ability to have direct, some kind of direct contact or um, uh, direct work with editors and newspapers, and of course thereby the readership uh, with the work itself. So. It reminds you, when working for print, it reminds you that the quality has to be there because you must appeal to a broad audience. And uh, yet at the same time, not necessarily losing yourself along the way. You have to stay true to your work. So, you know, that's a really long-winded way of saying they are two entirely different mediums, but the goal is the same, ultimately, to create a good comic strip that people will be compelled to read and enjoy and come back to time and time again for years to come, ideally. So that's, and, the, that's, uh, so that's the mission statement. The mission statement is that. It really doesn't matter. Print or online, the quality's got, quality has to be there. It has to be me, and uh, it has to be me being true to what I'm doing and appeal to readers no matter where they're at. So it's very important. Okay. Um, I'm going to presume that you don't want to get into specifics too much, that you don't want to spoil people for what's coming up right off the bat. I am but, willing to spoil people. All right. Well, well then give us, give us some spoilers. What's coming up? Uh, in the future for intelligent life. Okay, well, uh, without necessarily saying he, you know, these particular strips are going to happen. Right. I think you can definitely look forward to seeing more Skip and Barry interaction. Skip, uh, Skip being the geek like me, uh, geek realm, traditional geek stuff, comic books, you know, Marvel movies and Star Wars and Star Trek and sci-fi and fantasy novels and uh, watching, you know, all Nova these things that you would get beat like up on the playground for. Yes, but not anymore because it's, you know, it's, hey, being a geek these days is a badge of honor. I mean, it really is. It has changed. However, not necessarily in Barry's world because Barry is a sports, he's a sports geek, but he would never, ever admit that he is a geek because he, that's not quite how Barry sees himself. Barry knows, he knows all the stats since 1978 to all the Super Bowls and every player and, you know, their numbers and what they did and who did what. And uh, he runs the, the office fantasy football pool and, the, you know, fantasy baseball, fantasy basketball, you name it. And uh, so you get these two together, and they are polar opposites. They're extremely different, yet they're really the same person, ultimately. And there's a lot of humor there. And that's born out of the way I grew up. I grew up in, in, in the Indianapolis area. Uh, this is Colts country, you know. Uh, this is Pacers country. Uh, Indiana Hoosiers country. I'm sure a lot of people may have seen the Hoosiers, uh, the movie Hoosiers. And, of course, everyone knows about Bobby Knight and whatnot. So this is the environment that I grew up in. And when you're growing up in that environment as the kid who's playing Dungeons and Dragons on the playground, it is, you're on the periphery of, of the things that interest uh, the masses. And that's, that's where Barry and Skip come in because uh, they're so much alike. I mean, and they don't really realize it. They don't really want to admit it. 
they're they're polar opposites, yet they're completely fascinated by each other, and possible friendship ensues. You'll also see a lot of Skip and Gwen. Okay. Uh, Gwen is is she brings balance to the strip. She really is the voice of reason, and uh, so uh, Skip has a huge crush on Gwen. You're going to see a lot more a lot more about that, and you'll get to learn about each of those characters via just that one thing alone, but also various other things. Uh, Gwen's into social media. She's into blogging and whatnot. You'll learn more about that. And, of, of course, you'll learn more about Skip just through the varied other characters in his own life. And then, of course, Mike, who's the super geek. He's got the action figures and comic books hanging on the wall. Oh, kind of kind of like mine. Um, but, you know, he's, uh, he's the guy who wears his Klingon uniform to work and really has no qualms about doing that. So the things you can look forward to are getting to know the characters and their, their interactions very well. And also, I think probably quite a few geek and pop culture references. Uh, I get a real kick out of drawing things that I love and uh, drawing them in my own cartooning style and having some fun with it. So, Good. Yeah, that's some of what you'll get to look forward to. All right, uh, last question before we wrap things up here. If yeah. you had to uh, pick out or choose or design a theme song for Intelligent Life, what would that be? Well, I I don't know if I can pick an actual song itself. Can I give you a a combination of things that would make the perfect intelligent life thing? Go right ahead. If you could mix for me together in a bowl a delicious dish of 80s sitcom theme songs, okay. Bollywood, because I, I'm a freak for Bollywood. Right. I love it. Uh, 70s funk, because I'm a freak for 70s funk with a little hint of Morrissey, the whimsical Morrissey, not necessarily the depressing Morrissey, if you could bring those together, I have a feeling that would comprise the perfect Intelligent Life theme song. That's a tall order, and I can't think of it off the top of my head, but if you know yes. a song like that, send it to me, I'll send it to David, and then we'll have the Intelligent Life theme oh, yeah. song uh, nailed down. Yes. We will play it, and, oh, it'll be, it'll be awesome. Absolutely. It will be the most awesome theme song ever. All right, well, David, thank you so much for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, Thanks. David Reddick, the creator of Intelligent Life. You can read it on ComicsKingdom.com. You can find it at IntelligentLifeComics, plural, .com. And you're also yes. on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram you mentioned earlier. Anything else? Pinterest, Vine. So look uh, look for the IntelligentLifeComics.com website. From there, you can basically find all the social media that you your heart could ever desire regarding the characters in Intelligent Life. All right. Until next time, folks, read Intelligent Life, and I'm your comic strip critic, and I read the funny pages and search the web in search of comics like Intelligent Life. Yes. See you next time. Baby, if you ever wondered, wondered whatever became of me. I'm living on the air in Cincinnati, Cincinnati WKRP. Got Yeah.